For the past two years, Jocko Fuel has been the only supplement I've consumed. It's helped me stay in shape now that my competitive career is finished. If you've been waiting to try Jocko, the wait is over. Jocko has now teamed with Walmart, bringing clean fuel to the entire nation. Jocko Fuel is loaded with all the good stuff and none of the bad. And I'm talking no added sugars, no artificial sweeteners, and absolutely no gray area or banned substances. Just pure, clean fuel to power your performances. Jocko Fuel is now available in Walmart nationwide. Products available at your local Walmart are Jocko Mulk, ready to drink, Jocko Mulk powder, and Jocko pre-workout. How convenient. Guys, the time is now. Consider trying some of my favorites like Jocko Go and Jocko Hydrate. You can even do it online. Use code CHAIL30 at JockoFuel.com or just stop by your local Walmart and get your hands on some Jocko ASAP. Don't wait, might not last. Fuel up with Jocko Fuel and crush your goals. Now there's no excuse for not having clean fuel. Guys, I want you to go get Jocko Fuel today at Walmart. Brian Battle comes out and he comes out to a song and I'm not holding back on you. I'm not saying this like as a way of holding back, right? This is actually the name. N-word in Paris. That's the name of the song. Okay, relevant. Walks out to that. Has his fight, which is sheer entertainment, by the way. Gets a microphone after the fact and evokes an emotion from the audience. He, he fully did his job. But then a rumor started, and this is put it out by a spinning back fist. I, I got to say that. I got to say, I mean, journalism 101, I'm not a journalist, but journalism 101, make a statement, cite your source. So the way they tell it is that there is a $250,000 fine for Brian Battle and a suspension for the walkout song and what he had to say after the fight. Now, I've got to, I got to disclose it this way because I have not been able to confirm that beyond that. And when I heard from Brian Battle's people, they were traveling, right? It was an international flight. They were traveling yesterday. So we, we couldn't get service and quite get in touch with each other. But I fear it's true. As a matter of fact, the only thing that would make me question if it's true is which is makes it nothing more than a guess but it would that it was sunday right commissions don't generally work on a sunday for something like that to come down on a sunday was the only only part of that i don't know i don't know how good this information is as much as a threat or showing something with the bylaws or showing you hey what we could do as a way of kind of telling you for the future but that's a pretty good source, and those details are pretty specific. $250,000, that's a specific amount. Reason, because of the walkout song, which happened to be called N-Word in Paris. What he said afterwards, which definitely did evoke an emotion, like there, there was a lot of details on that. And the fact that when I heard back from Brian Battle's people, it was to let me know, hey, you know, I'm not with him, but uh, just, just so you can expect, you know, he doesn't land until tomorrow. Like, why wouldn't you just tell me no? Or tell me yes? I mean, it's just one of these things where it's an interesting rumor, and I hope it isn't true, because you have an entertainer, and generally speaking, the sponsors and the commission can see through the entertainment, generally speaking, but not all of the time. I can just personalize that twice. I was supposed to do, or I was offered to do, The Ultimate Fighter with Michael Bisping. It ended up being Mayhem Miller versus Bisping. And I don't think I've ever told you guys this story, but there was an appearance of, hey, where did that come from? Where did Mayhem and Bisping ever have, have, have heat to get to this point? And so just to share that, I could not get licensed in Nevada, and I even fly in to have a private meeting. The UFC believed, okay, we, we have entertainment. They haven't quite seen this before. If they meet him, they'll get it, and that is not how it ended. It ended with a very bizarre statement of he is setting an example for kids and it is apparently not an example that he thought was good this gentleman and but i had to face that again i was going to end up being against shogun shogun in massachusetts 
And we had to lawyer up and go before the Massachusetts Commission for the very same reason of here is what he has said in the past, which you must understand, more of what you didn't say. No, no violence, no profanity, n nothing along these lines. And it almost seems like if you're not doing violence and you're not doing profanity, all, what, whatever you said, I almost like can stop you right there. If, if it was not in question of that, I'm not even going to look into suspension of a privileged license. And the commission, when they heard this, essentially laughed and dismissed it instantly. They did a great job in Massachusetts, but it still had to be dealt with. So I can't just dismiss it. And the psychology of it is far more interesting than the events themselves. The, the psychology of, first off, I just don't know how the fighter, even if he picked the walkouts, I don't know how he would be held liable for it. I mean, it seems like there would be an investigation. Let's just say somewhere in the world had a problem with walkout songs. Before you stuck a $250,000 fine on a fighter, did he play the song? I mean, is he the one that put, I mean, you, you, like, you, you'd have an investigation. Okay, well, did he request it? Did he turn it in? Like, does he even have anything to do with it or the wrong song get played? That's all I'm suggesting. I know that's not what happened, but what I'm suggesting is before the government agency w would make a decision and invoke some kind of an action, they would do a small amount of due diligence. And then, by the way, at the same time that they issued the disciplinary action, they would state very clearly what within their bylaws gave them the authority to do that. So, okay, great. That was one of the things listed. And then you have the post-fight interview. And you have a gentleman who had a job to entertain. Now, now, there is nothing that is better from a live audience perspective than if you can get them to participate. Generally, you can do that two ways, which is the cheers or the boos. But for the real greats, right, I'm talking about the real greats, I'm talking about the Stone Cold Steve Austins, the Dwayne The Rock Johnsons, they'll get them to chant, they'll get them to come along, they'll get them to say what they're saying on cue, and there's just, there's just simply nothing better you could do for an audience. So when Brian Battle goes out and he evokes an emotion and gets a reaction, physical and verbal, from the sounds they're making, but also physical, they're standing on their feet. He has now done his job, and you would have to come back to, well, okay, great, but that can't be the only litmus test. How did he do it? Was there any threats? Was there profanity? And once you start to break down, no, well, then let me just stop you right there. We don't need to now go on to what he did do. If we've established he did not do violence, profanity, we get up and we leave the room. So... I want to see where that goes, and I also don't want Brian Battle to be discouraged. I don't want him to, to hear that or think that he has done something wrong. He put on an excellent fight. He put on an excellent post-fight. And there's ways to know who won over the weekend. A lot of people would love to have a conversation of, well, whose stock went up the most from Saturday? And you can share your opinion, but like so many other things, it just turns into a popularity contest and it's personalized to you of who did you like the most. But there is actually metrics that you go off of. The appropriate metrics, which is in the 72 hours following the event. So the first place that will start is the post-fight press conference. Then that will go until Tuesday of the next week, which is by Tuesday afternoon. Whatever was done is, is now actually done and we move and spin things forward for what's coming up following Saturday. And whoever got the most headline, the most attractions, created the most stories that made it to the market, that's who stock went up the most. That is who won. And that's what Brian Battle did. He should be given a pat on the back. He could be given a boo. You don't have to like him. To like what he did. He had a job that he accepted, which involved him entertaining you. And most fighters will only have the performance as the commodity that they can monetize. But there are a few others. Moicano, Sean O'Malley, Colby, Henry, Adesanya. There's only a few that will find a way to monetize and entertain in other aspects of the arts. That is not something you ridicule. That is something you celebrate. 